The Raps gave us our first look at their .5 second offensive system under rookie head coach Darko Ryakovich by dominating Sacramento in Vancouver. GTJ's 22 off the pine was a game high, and led by Trent plus Boucher and McDaniels who all scored in double figures, the six finished with an insane 65 bench points, and that was with every starter playing into the second half despite it being a preseason game. Wing Phenom, Scotty Barnes, and OG Ananobi combined for 29. It was the most pass-first version of Pascal Siakam that I've seen in a while, and rookie sensation Grady Dick had the Van City crowd in a frenzy. Don't get me wrong, the rookie struggled with his shot going just 2 for 6, but did knock down two highly contested jumpers and snatch two steals in just 14 minutes. Regardless of if this team is getting consistent production from Grady though, it's clear that Trent Jr. combining with wide reach wrecking balls on the wing in Chris Boucher and Jalen McDaniels gives Toronto a more than stable bench mob. Gary Trent Jr. embracing the sixth man role is going to make him sixth man of the year given his starter caliber shot creation. In German world champion Dennis Schroeder's debut, it was great to see him be committed to instilling a Serbian-led offensive system. The Raps don't need Schroeder to be the top dog like he was for Germany, but Deutschland's MVP leading Toronto in assists with five dimes, along with his managing of the tempo and unselfishness to both set the table for others offensively and constantly keep everyone engaged with elite body language, was a breath of fresh air to watch from a Toronto point guard. Despite an entire marathon being ahead of them, the Raptors are in a seemingly revitalized position both chemistry and continuity-wise. At the head of the snake, the intensely galvanized Darko Ryakovich has high hopes for the implementation of an unfamiliar system. Point five offense means uh, making quick decisions. Every time that a player catches the ball, he needs to be ready to attack, to shoot, or dribble, or pass the ball. And we want to make quick decisions. We want to be able to, to play with the ball very quickly. We want to be able to execute in the half-court uh, offense and to play a selfish style of basketball. Toronto transitioning to this move-the-ball-at-all-cost system after being a team for the last five seasons under Nick Nurse, who lived and died off individual off-the-dribble creation, will be an adjustment right off the bat. Pascal Siakam and the entirety of this Raptor team having no issues with either Darko's constantly engaged leadership or his team-based offensive system, that speaks volumes to me. Darko and his entire new coaching staff have seemingly established a winning atmosphere from the jump. On media day, Gary Trent would say his conversations with Darko are unlike anything he's ever experienced from a coach in his career. And Trent being solid at moving without the basketball and elite at running slash dribbling into shots on the move should make him a top beneficiary of this system. That said, any professional hooper in general has a little bit of something in their skill set that can benefit from Darko's quick decision making based style of play. To quote Ryakovic about how his lineups are going to be handled, 1 through 4 are interchangeable, so we're not going to be calling plays for a certain player. So in other words, Darko's system won't put a strain on one particular option. Speaking on one of the players the system heavily relied upon for the last half decade in Pascal Siakam, Darko said he's doing a great job. The system is actually allowing him to be more efficient. He's doing a great job at cutting and playing without the ball and spacing, and you cannot hide the talent on the floor. He is extremely talented and extremely high quality player. The ball is always going to find the best players on the court. As you see right there, with all the headlines stirred up about Siakam being selfish, that last statement from Darko shows us Pascal has no outward issue adjusting his playstyle to buy into a totally new system. It's thus far been a fluid adjustment for Spicy, and considering he put up superstar numbers last year, Siakam doing that with no problem says a lot about his team first mindset. Pascal may have a bit of a big ego, but he's not petty and is willing to sacrifice for the greater good. This adjustment to accept less shots while embracing a whole new different brand of basketball is firsthand proof. Scotty Barnes scoring a starter most 15 points, making 5 of his 9 shots, and being a game high plus 20, made it an above average, unofficial third year debut for the man. Shaping up to be one of the best slashers across the NBA, Barnes was far too overpowering for Sacramento to merely bother, let alone stop. Making Barnes increasingly unstoppable, he grew from 6'8 to 6'11 and went from 225 to 240 pounds. Scott showed a willingness to confidently transition to the post whether that was off his own drive or as a screen setter receiving the outlet. Buying into his slashing archetype just like your boy d said he should, 
He gets past Herter on the semi-fast break, draws the attention of all five King defenders after dribbling through the paint, but instead of dishing it off, he just drifts back into Sabonis and muscles through him for a tough finish. Following the OG steal, watch how Barnes fills out the left lane, receives the swing from Siakam, swiftly Euro steps around Mitchell, and floats it over two defenders. Going to his offhand in the half court, an elite big body from Yak and a blow-by duck-in to get around the drop coverage of McGee puts JaVale on a poster. Symbolizing how solid of a rookie and sophomore run it was for Barnes, since 93-94, he's one of six players next to Luka Doncic, Grant Hill, LeBron James, Ben Simmons, and Lamar Odom to score 2,000 plus points, grab 1,000 plus boards, and dish out 600 plus dimes. Someone who fans up north are hoping to have a similarly solid first few campaigns in Grady Dick, got into the heart of the defense and created a spot up J for GTJ, hit a leaning back mid-range fadeaway jumper with EuroLeague MVP Sasha Vavenkov draped all over him, and amidst even more traffic, drained a 99% contested spot up triple from the corner. The Dick showed off his potential, despite for the most part, a shaky debut. The man who Grady will be backing up in OG, or should I say Goatee and Anobi, was the most efficient Raptor in the preseason opener, making six of his seven shots and two of his two three-pointers, while being tied with Pascal Siakam for a game high in steals. Here he denies the screen from Pirtle, momentum crosses in the other direction, puts his shoulder down into Harrison Barnes, and one two steps around the vertical contest. One thing you should expect is for the continuity level to show itself for Scotty, Siakam, and Ananobi, given it'll be their third year starting next to each other. It'll be Pascal and OG, seventh year as teammates, as Siakam finds Ananobi with the DHO, knowing the defense is sagging, and OG drains the spot up, bailing Toronto out at the back end of the 24. Ananobi's been working out with Curry, and his up fake and contested fadeaway triple definitely resembles the chef. Back to the chemistry with Spicy, and off the Siakam steal, OG's already down the floor, and he throws down the lob from Pascal. Masayu Jury said there would be no selfishness for his team on media day, and the Raps are off to a decent start in that regard. Shout out for today goes to FYI Sin, who says Rudy Gay should get one roster spot and the dub should leave a 15th spot open in case they need a backup center. For your chance at both a shout out plus a free NBA jersey or shoe, subscribe to this channel, follow at DFlowHoops on Instagram and Twitter, and answer the following question down below in the comments to compete for a top 5 position on the Speaks board. Questions on your screen, this was your boy DFlow, and peace.